All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Dyson Sphere Program. Before I get started, I want to say that the game is in early access and all data that's presented here is current as of the date of recording. I'm sure it's going to change in the future. Or it might not, but we'll see. Powering your mecha is pretty dang important, and quickly you're going to wind up learning that your mecha runs out of power fast. Initially, when you land, you're going to probably going to wind up start mining, and the next thing you know, you're going to get this notification that says, hey, you're running out of power. Luckily, when you break down Icarus, you wind up getting five hydrogen fuel rods. And if you hit C on your keyboard, you can open up the mecha panel and then just drag those hydrogen fuel rods from your inventory into the mecha panel. There'll be four little areas. Now, this is true for any power that you wind up getting. This panel is where you're going to power your mecha. But you'll wind up using those five hydrogen fuel rods pretty quickly. So what can you do to power your mecha in this early stage of the game? Well, luckily, you have two things available to you without having to do any kind of research or anything else. You have the plant life that's around you and the trees that are around you that produce logs. Both of these things can produce energy for your mecha. Now, granted, they're not going to produce a lot of energy. The plant fuel or the plant material is going to produce 500 kilojoules and the logs themselves will produce 1.5 megajoules. But again, these are not things that are going to be sustainable because you can't regrow plants and you can't plant the trees. So you're, this is very limited. There's abundance of them on the planet, but you know, you will eventually run out if you're focused on using plants and logs as your main power source. So you don't want it as your main power source. What you want to get uh, relatively quickly is to unlock electromagnetism, which will give you mining. And then as soon as you start mining, then you can start mining coal and coal is something that can be burned to produce energy for the mecha coal provides a pretty decent power source in this beginning stage it produces 2.7 megajoules of energy and you're going to be using coal for a while coal is going to be your friend so make sure that you have an area set up to store some coal because you're going to be using that quite often your next power source is probably going to be energetic graphite just because it kind of follows the same theme you don't have to go in these orders obviously you could pick any research that you want to but since some of this research is linear you're going to wind up coming across one of these paths uh, depending on how you choose it but graphite from a value standpoint is probably the next in line it's going to require some research you're going to have to research smelting purification in order to unlock the energetic graphite but then once you get it unlocked, you can actually produce graphite in one of two ways. The easiest way is converting two coal into graphite through the smelter. And you can actually produce graphite pretty quickly. And it's a great power source because it provides 6.3 megajoules of power. And once you're out of coal and you're producing the energetic graphite, chances are this is going to be your main source of power for your mecha. For a little while anyway. As part of the graphite process, there's actually another process that you can do to create power, and that's diamond power. Now, you're going to have to research the crystal smelting in order to produce diamonds, but you can use diamonds as a fuel source for your mecha. The, you know, the reason I, I didn't want to include this is because it's such a minuscule amount of power that it wasn't really worth it. But I figured if I didn't include it on this list, somebody would come along and say, hey, you forgot diamond. <laughs> so here it is, diamond. It produces 900 kilojoules of power and it can be used in the mecha as well. After graphite, you're probably gonna move into oil production. And this is gonna take a bunch of research. To unlock oil refining, you're gonna need the plasma extract refining. And that actually gives you several things. It gives you uh, not only the oil extraction uh, building, but it also gives you the refinery, which will allow you to make some of its byproducts. You're probably also going to get the fluid storage because uh, when you're dealing with large quantities of these byproducts, it's going to be necessary to store them. Another downside of these byproducts is they only stack in, t in stacks of 20. And so you're really going to need somewhere to put the fluid because you're going to fill up your storage rather quickly if you don't put it into this fluid storage. You're also going to need uh, the basic chemical engineering and polymer chemical engineering 
to produce the final pieces of the oil byproducts. Now, from an energy standpoint, these byproducts are actually really nice. Crude oil provides you know, four megajoules of power. Refined is 4.4 megajoules of power. Hydrogen is a whopping eight megajoules of power. The only one that is on the downside here is the organic crystal, which is only a 1.8 megajoule of power and kind of useless in the sense of being used for that, you know, mecha energy. But crude oil, refined oil, and hydrogen are, are very, very nice. The biggest downside to these three byproducts is that they only stack in 20s. And so, you know, you're not really getting the bang for your buck out of these because you, you don't have the space to store these guys. I guarantee it. Really, the best usage for these is to use them in the next stage which is the hydrogen fuel rod. So you're going to need to research the hydrogen fuel rod, which unlocks the hydrogen fuel rod. And then you can actually wind up making hydrogen fuel rods with that hydrogen and uh, titanium uh, ingots. Titanium ingots is a whole different story to get, but we won't get into that different video. Anyways, the energy that's in a hydrogen fuel rod is 40 megajoules, which is significant and they stack to 30 units now 30 units sounds small but since they house so much energy you they're actually going to last for a very long time and so that brings us into deuterium and deuterium fuel and with that you're going to need several more pieces of research you're going to need the miniature particle collider to create deuterium you're also going to need the mini fusion power generator to actually create the deuterium fuel Along the line, before you get that mini fusion generator, you have to get the deuterium fraction, uh, fractionation uh, because it's just one of the requirements to be able to get the mini fusion power generation. So that's something you're just going to have to pick up. But a significant increase in power. Deuterium in itself is eight megajoules of power, which is really nice. But when you look at doing the deuterium fuel rods, we're talking about 600 megajoules of power. That's a huge amount of power. I. I have no idea what they stack to. I'm not that far in the game yet to be able to produce the deuterium fuel. I'm pretty close, but I'm, I haven't built the production lines for it. I think I have it unlocked, uh, but I'm, I'm probably guessing they stack either less than 30 or, uh, well, hopefully more, but I have no idea. I, I have a feeling as we go up in power, you, you can stack less in a group. And that brings us to antimatter. Now, antimatter fuel, you're going to need the controlled annihilation reaction. And let me just tell you that the prerequisites for research is pretty much the entire tree to be able to get here. You know, as you look at the research tree, it narrows down. And this is way towards the end. This is very last late game. Uh, the antimatter fuel rods produce 7.5 gigajoules of power. Massive amount. It's the most power that you can produce in a fuel rod. And I, you know, have a feeling that you're only going to be able to carry a handful of these because they store so much energy. As an interesting side note, the thermal power station can actually use all of the fuel sources that I listed here. The only difference is that there's a conversion loss. There's either a loss or a gain, depending on the fuel that you use. Most of it is at a negative side, but there are some fuels that do give you plus positive conversion rate. So if you had an abundance of these fuels, you could always burn the rest of them at the thermal power station if you want to use them up. Well, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about your mecha powering. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'd love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.